Good evening. We are honored tonight to present Dick Gregory, a legendary comedian, political activist, author, recording artist, and nutritionist. Born in 1932 in St. Louis, Missouri, Mr. Gregory became an activist even when he was in high school, when he protested segregation and racial discrimination. An outstanding track star, he won a scholarship to the Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. And along with his athletic achievements, he, by the way, set a school record in the half mile. He also continued his social activism. Drafted into the Army in 1954, during his two-year service, he won several talent shows as a comic. He started his professional career in Chicago in the late 1950s and had his big break in 1961 when, with his great success at the Chicago Playboy Club, he earned a profile in Time Magazine and a television spot on the Jack, Jack Parr Show. He was a new kind of black comedian, cool, detached, ironic. He used social and political satire to help audiences rethink their perceptions about race. I can bear personal witness to this. In 1965, and I feel I probably should repeat that. I just found out that uh, Professor Connor was only born in that year. But in, in 1965, when I was a sophomore in college, I attended a, a youth conference in Miami where Dick Gregory was the keynote speaker. Here I was, a, a girl from a very small town in Nebraska for the very first time in the big city of Miami Beach. And as exciting as all of that was, what I recall most vividly from that experience was Dick Gregory. He sat alone on a stage on a stool with a microphone, and he made several thousand of us laugh until tears ran down our cheeks. He used his humor to make us think about the central issue of our day, civil rights. Gregory did it not only that night, but again and again throughout his career using his talents to promote social justice. Through his performances, his books, his records, and his witness, he has fought against violence, world hunger, capital punishment, drug abuse, and inadequate health care. He has made an art of the political hunger fast. And in the process, he also became a nutritional expert. He's published 15 books. The very first was his autobiography in 1964, and the most recent is an updated autobiography called Callous on My Soul. He ran for mayor of Chicago in 1966 and for president of the United States in 1968. Bill Clinton once called Dick Gregory the funniest man on the planet. After tonight, I think you'll probably agree. We are delighted to present Dick Gregory and his evening of humor and humanity. say thank you very much and I thank and praise God we've all made it here safely today I pray to God that your return and my return will be equally as safe first let me say thanks to those of you who made this evening possible my job is very easy I just have to produce a body Secondly, let me thank the folks who handles the physical part of it. Somebody picked me up tonight and somebody showing sure up going to take me back. <laughs> These mics and chairs didn't just jump up here. And, and when we leave here tonight, folks will never know their name. will come in after we're gone and clean up behind us. 
And for all those invisible faces, we say thank you. And thirdly, those of you that interrupted your evening to come and share this with us, because had you not made that decision, the rest of it wouldn't have mattered. So to you and you and you, we say thank you. The closer it gets to Inauguration Day, the more I think about King and think about how blessed I was to, the biggest story that's ever happened in the history of the planet was that movement. A white, racist, sexist, insane system, it'll be 200 years before you find out what the rest of the world knows. And the reason it's the biggest story, there's been other stories equal, but we didn't have the mass communication system. My poor mother, she's lovely, kind, peaceful. If she wasn't dead and she was here tonight and y'all tried to convince her that Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she'd stomp you to death. Because <laughs> out of that ignorance, she didn't know that Christianity didn't happen until 100 years after he was dead. Matter of fact, nobody wrote nothing about him in the first 100 years. And my mama didn't even know his brother James was killed the same way he was. That was funny. She used to always talk about homosexuality and, and what God don't like. And, and she's sitting there reading King James version of the Bible. And she didn't even know King James was king of England and was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mother. And his, his lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after her. And yeah, we've left you young folks an awful mess. Hmm? The sad part about it, if, if you're not willing to change this, then I say have fun and have fun quick or the recess is over. And so one day, maybe 100, maybe 200 years from now, the folks that will tell the whole world the story about that movement haven't even been born and when they get here, they won't have no hidden agendas, huh? And then one day the world will know what we black folks went through. The physical and the mind game. That's what King had to change. <laughs> Think about my mother. Raised six of us by herself. worked two or three jobs. And Christmas was kind of exciting then because there wasn't no TV. You didn't see no toys till Christmas. You turn on TV now, you see all kind of toys. So we just, and something strange about Christmas. It's a strange feeling. Me and my brothers and sisters, we would argue all the time, but not on Christmas morning. Huh? It was a peace and a stillness, and, and we was unwrapping the gifts. And there's something about a wrap gift. You know it's new. See, people don't wrap used stuff. They'll give you a used bike, but they won't wrap it. <laughs> and so we opening them up, and, I, and I'm... And I'm so happy. And I open up this little shirt. Mother bought it at the five and dime. Brand new, it's about 35 cents. And I was just so happy. I was thinking about the other day, I went to Neiman Marcus and, and called a sale and bought me a shirt for $1,600 down from 4500 and I was telling my grandson the story, and I said, 
When I was a little boy, if you put this shirt next to the one my mother bought me, they both looked the same. Because they was new. And after my mother worked hard to give us joy on Christmas morning, I want you to hear this. Then you might understand what happened last November. See, most folks are so busy worrying about white folks' reaction, you forgot mine. After she did all that, with no Ku Klux Klan standing there with a gun, say, nigga, this is what you tell them. On her own, she told me, a white man bought that stuff for me. Huh? Huh? That's what we coming out of now. Slavery, the physical scars you can see, the mental scars, huh? And you're not close enough to us to really know. That's why most of us can lie to you. Oh, everybody upset over the word nigga. What's that about? The N word. If I bought a product today and it said made in USA, I mean United States of America. It said made in USSR, I mean made in Russia. So the N word mean nigga. So what's this game about? And I hope my Jewish brothers and sisters don't get stupid enough and silly enough because some Germans get upset over what Hitler and them Nazis did that they changed the word concentration camp to the C word. <laughs> All at once, white folks got uncomfortable with the word. Do your homework and find out no black person decided that that was going to be the new designated word. And it also saves a lot of people money because we have hate crime laws now. If I say nigga and then hit you, it's a federal case, that's hate crime. If I say N-word and hit you, or that go to the local judge. <laughs> <laughs> One day, and what's taking so long because we black women lying to y'all and make you think we happy. You upset over the word nigga, so we got to make like we upset over it. And nobody's never really concentrated on the word nigga. I've been married to a black woman for 50 years. She's never used the word. 98% of black women ain't never said the word. That's a man thing would mean it must be some sex connected to it. One day all of this is going to come out. Huh? I go all over the world. I go to China, I hang out in the Christian community. Jesus Christ look Chinese. Go to Japan, hang out in the Christian community. Jesus Christ looked Japanese. Go to Brazil, Jesus Christ looked Brazilian. Come back to America and go to black church, he a white man. And I don't care what color Jesus is, as long as he stays the same. Huh? But you got some black folks would be outraged if he was anything else but white. Black folks say, we want Mother Mary to be a, a black woman. Black folk be complaining, but the Polish run back every year to Poland to fall on their knees and pray to a black Madonna. That's okay. I'm telling you what King had to go through because of our mindset. I'm going to be nice to you black folks in the room, so I'm not going to use you as an example. <laughs> but you know how many black folks in this town right tonight while we're getting ready to celebrate the first 
African-American president, how many black folks in this town tonight that if they saw a daughter come home in love with a black man as dark as me, they would have problems with it, but that's not for discussion. Huh? That, I'm talking about today. That's not for discussion. But nigger is, I can never be a nigger. This is a game. When I think about how fast this thing done changed. Hmm? My God. Thank God I not only lived to see it, I was part of it. And we was running down there 45 years ago in Mississippi. I knew I would die with a wife and a family. I went from making $1,500 a year when the thing hit me so big, I made $3 million in the next 18 months. I had everything to live for but human dignity. And every time I went to Mississippi, I knew I would die. Thank God I went anyway. Because in the process of doing that, I found out there's something worse than dying. And that's being disgraced. And when you sit and let another human being reduce you below the dignity that God gave you just so you can feed your family or send your children to college or pay for your home, God will destroy you from the inside. Hmm? Thank you, Dr. King. Did I ever think back then? Oh, he had a vision. He, you know, we, we might have to die, but no, no meanness, no bitterness, no. Whew. And now, 45 years later, could I ever believe back then that head of the Mississippi State Troopers tonight as we sit here as a black man. Head of social services in Mississippi as a black woman, a black woman or a white woman want to get on welfare, you got to get past the system. Hmm? Did I think I see this change, 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 change so fast? White folks would ask me to comment on white folk business. <laughs> I come back in from Budapest a couple of weeks ago and 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 NBC was at the airport and Mr. Gregory, you think we'll ever catch Ben Loudon? I said, we? <laughs> I ain't looking for him. Huh? I'm still trying to find out who my daddy is. Huh? <laughs> Serious. Bob Hope died 104 years old. Died at 3 o'clock in the morning. AP called me and woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Mr. Gregory, uh, 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 Bob Hope died uh, at 3 o'clock this morning. Just want to get a comment from you. <laughs> I said, I thought he'd been dead. <laughs> he said, what did you say? I said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, my comment is, is Bob Hope should... Uh, Family should get on a plane and fly to St. Chicago and go by Jesse Jackson's push meeting and fall on their knees and kiss Jesse's feet. Because for 40 years, Jesse been yelling, keep hope alive. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. King. Thank God for that movement. I've been married 50 years and love ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> My wife told me when we first got married, if you ever leave me, I will hurt you. <laughs> hurt will keep a brother home for a long time. <laughs> 
And then when you start making big money, there's another word that'll keep you home that Michael Jordan just found out about called halves. <laughs> but it's through the movement, through King, through that. I love you, baby. If I can't have you, ain't nobody gonna have you. There always something sound wrong with that. I didn't know what it was. I've been married 50 years because I found out through this movement it's not about love. Thank you, King. It's can you be lovable? And then when you're lovable, I'm safe with you and you're safe with me. Huh? Somewhere. And in the process of being mad for years, I found out how smart black women are. The strongest two forces in the history of America has always been the black woman in the black church. I didn't know how smart my woman was until Kobe Bryant got caught up in that mess. You know, the white woman accused him of raping her, and he flew home and bought his wife a $4 million diamond ring. Do you know if a white woman accused me tonight of raping her and I go give Lillian in a four million dollar diamond ring, she'll go out and get two more white women. <laughs> well, she got enough sense to know wherever that ring came from, there's a matching necklace and bracelet. Huh? <laughs> and so you youngsters, if it, it, it just, uh, there's no words to tell you how fast that mindset have changed. Hmm? I was born before television. Today, a plane crash in Budapest, those bodies be in your living room in 15 minutes. Huh? I looked at that plane wreck in New York the other day. Your wife will y'all a trip. Here's a pilot on the plane. The plane crashed. He landed in the water. And he a hero. He wasn't no hero. He had a vested interest. <laughs> oh, crazy. He trying to get home to his old lady. He'd have been a hero had he been sitting in a restaurant and, and ran, jumped in the water like Superman. I'll save you. Oh, you know, crazy. John McCain, he's a hero. How the hell he a hero when he got captured? Huh? It was a prisoner of war. You know, I'm from the John Wayne days, a hero. You ran up the top of the mountain and killed people, and they kept you, and you kept killing. He's sitting there five years with the enemy. And then he come back here, here, and y'all fall for that crap. And I'm sure some of y'all in this room, I'd be surprised if you didn't. Some of y'all know he told on everybody, and yet they can keep that quiet. Hmm? Hmm. He told on everybody. Every now and then it comes out, and they say, well, he had mental problems. He still got mental problems. I looked at him the other day on TV and said, either he dead or he a very sick man. I was in the military. Well, I was in the military for three days. <laughs> <laughs> they put me out because I was asking some serious questions. Three days in the military. Captain stand on a platform, 50,000 of us in the field. If you get captured by the enemy, give up nothing but name, rank, and seal number. Y'all understand? And 50,000, yeah, we understand. I felt real bad. Because out of 50,000 people, I didn't understand. I said, Captain, did, did you say if you're captured by the enemy, give up nothing but name, rank, and seal number? You ladies know, you heard of dog tags, right? And on the dog tags is name, rank, and seal number, which means the enemy could get that much information if you were dead. 
I say, no way, y'all got to give me something to negotiate with. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm fighting your country. You capture me. I can't tell you no more than if I'd have been killed. No, no, I'm not me. So then they tried to embarrass, well, you a traitor, you, you un-American. I said, no, no, this is my third day in the military. I've been a traitor and un-American had I not told y'all. So I'm telling you now, you tell them to put on Dick Gregory's records in the Pentagon. If Dick Gregory ever get caught, y'all change all your used to be secrets. Hmm? That's right. Hmm? Cause there's something about a dude pouring hot water down my back and snatching my fingernails off and sticking pins in my eyeballs, I tell them where my mama is. <laughs> and if she don't understand, she'll understand when that hot water hit her back, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but this thing is just moving so fast, huh? Hey, you have to understand, I'm born 1932, and y'all got you young folks now, things is kind of getting bad. So, so you used to always hear the old folks trying to ridicule, show what you was back in the good old days. They didn't stop talking about that now, look like we there. <laughs> good old days. I lived through, they called the good old days. Only thing good about the good old days was they left. <laughs> we were so poor and hungry and ragged when I was a child, the best day we had in our house was Halloween. That's the day you could wear your natural clothes. And everybody thought you was dressed for the occasion. <laughs> Woo, look at Richard, got on shoes, look just like feet. <laughs> Good old days. And black folks, you old, some of you old black folks can just lie. You don't even know you're lying to these young folks. Black woman walked with me the other day in Kansas City. Mr. Gregory, you know, y'all work too hard for these young black boys to be wearing their pants down below their underwear. I said, what do you mean? Well, you know what I'm talking about. Well, you were, you were aware Hitler never wore his pants below his underwear. Hitler never had his cap on backwards. Huh? Hitler never used profanity, plus Hitler was a vegetarian. Huh? And if you ever look at Hitler with no emotions, be he in civilian clothes, huh? Or uniform, he was immaculate. The mob boys, them thugs who reduced this nation to animalistic tendencies. They was always well dressed. Mm -hmm. So maybe God is trying to tell us through our young folks, never again will you judge another one of my creatures from without. Mm -hmm. But we're not spiritual enough and godly enough to judge from within. I, I can't believe people walk up to me and say, I'm a Christian. Well, if you got to tell me, you must not be one. But next month, I'll be with all the Christians. Huh? New Orleans, Mardi Gras. <laughs> you know, that's the only Christian festivities in the, in, in the whole world where whores come in from all over the world to help us celebrate. <laughs> yeah, that's where we go. You know, New Orleans called Sin City. Yeah. Only time of the year a cop in New Orleans can't take the day off is doing Mardi Gras. The Christians is there. <laughs> and whores come in from all over the world to help us celebrate. You know, Fat Tuesday, we eat anything moving. Ash Wednesday, we hit our head with an ash and fake a prayer for 40 days. Were you there when they crucified the Lord? That's such a cheap song to sing 2,000 years later. You wasn't there then, and most of you wouldn't be there now. And I don't know how y'all can cry over the crucifixion of Christ, but be for capital punishment. Or are you too ignorant and dumb to realize that the state killed Christ? He wasn't mugged to death or run down by some drunken chariot driver. <laughs> Jesus Christ was killed by the state, which is called capital punishment. 
which means if Jesus Christ, your Jesus, came back to America today and bugged the wrong people, they'd give him the electric chair. Then all us Christians be walking around with big chairs around our neck. Where are you there? How you make the sign of the chair? And then we feel so bad about getting ready to kill you. We have a last supper for you. Imagine if I was in jail waiting on the lecture chair and they walked up to me and said, tonight's tonight. What do you want to eat? Well, I don't want anything. Why? Well, the guy invented last supper didn't come out too well. <laughs> we have to do something for you. Well, bring me a bottle of wine. Well, you can't drink in jail, but since we're getting ready to kill you, uh, we get you a bottle of wine. What year? 2095, and I'll wait for it. Were you there when they crucified the Lord? And now they, they say we, we have to be humane. We give you lethal injection. <laughs> and 24 hours before they, they give you a lethal injection, uh, they give you a test, an allergy test, to see if you're allergic to anything. <laughs> And once they find out you're not, when they get ready to inject you, the nurse comes out and swap your arm with, with alcohol. <laughs> Kill the germs. <laughs> I'm looking at all that mess over there in Gaza and in Israel and and wonder what kind of human beings are we that will permit that to happen on your watch. And when I realize every time I go to a peace rally anywhere in the world, they take my taxes off my airplane ticket and buy bombs to drop on other people's children so when they fall on my grandchildren, God just give me the strength to understand who I really am. And they say, well, go around, come around. Y'all better quit saying that because it's just about to come around. Huh? And all these brilliant people, they don't know how to straighten it out. They've been over there hating one another for six years, so how are you going to change it? Huh? How are you going to change it? You got to create somebody that's ethical enough and say, let's have a ceasefire for 50 years. Don't try to work out nothing else. And then 50 years from now, you got babies that was born today that 50 years old that didn't see loved ones getting killed. Huh? But we can be real stupid when we don't want to change nothing. Huh? So we left that mess for you young folks. Hmm? Thank you, Dr. King. <laughs> I was coming back from Europe a couple of months ago and, <laughs> and saw this book on sale. Assassinations, assassinations that shook the world from Julius Caesar to JFK. Wow, that's a long time back. And when I was a little boy, I was brought up talking about all them folks way back and way back, how vicious they was and how cruel they was. And <laughs> get the thumbing through this book on the plane and had to stop. From Julius Caesar to JFK. And in this book, five of the people in there I knew personally tell me about the 20th century, okay? From Dr. King to Medgar Evers to, to Martin to the two Kennedy boys. That's not counting the other ones that wasn't classed as political hits. On our watch, Somewhere. But this thing is moving so fast. Wow. And 
and, and poor Obama, boy, if I, if I was his advisor, I would whisper in his ear tomorrow, ask for a recount. <laughs> and my wife can be real fragile sometimes. She called me the other day. <clears throat> she said, Dick, Dick, uh, the Secret Service called uh, you on the VIP list. She said, get him on the phone. Really? Let me see. Dick Gregory. Oh, well, there's certain people we're going to pick up and bring to the. I said, who is this? The Secret Service. I said, is this the same Secret Service was, 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 was with JFK in Dallas? <laughs> no, I'll get there on my own. <laughs> and for you youngsters, uh, the progress has been made. See, we call it Black History Month, but it used to be called Negro History Week. So we've gone from a week to a month. And when you know, wouldn't you know when they get ready to give us a month, be that month in February and all them days missing? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I didn't expect the 31 day, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I, I mean, I don't understand. February the 2nd, groundhog, what's a groundhog? If the groundhog sees a shatter, six more weeks of winter. You know, groundhog February the 2nd, you know that, right? Because they look for the groundhog to see the shatter. Spring is March the 21st. From February the 2nd to March 21st, that is six weeks. <laughs> I was in New York last year on February the 2nd. I was doing this radio show with the white guy. I said, Brother Greg, you my man, baby. Today's Groundhog Day. What do you think will happen to that the Groundhog see shot? I said, back up, man. I don't play that Groundhog stuff. <laughs> White boy got hostile. What do you mean? You, you, you anti-American? You anti Oh, man, I don't know you feel that way. You feel that way. Ask me again. I'll play it. He said, today's Groundhog Day. What do you think will happen if the Groundhog sees the shadow? I said, six more weeks of winter, sir. I said, since we're going to play it, let's keep playing it. Suppose the Groundhog come out today. And don't see no shadow, see five black dudes. What do that mean? Well, white boy got nervous. I don't know what it means. Six more weeks of basketball, chump. <laughs> so I hope Obama, he will put a little money aside for black folks to get into entrepreneur. But y'all, but no, 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 I take that back, because y'all be probably wanting to open up an automobile company. General Motors going broke. What you want to get in that for? I'd like to open up a, a black airline called Tamika Air. And our motto is, we leave late, but we get you there on time. And this black airline will never lose one of your bags because we're not going to permit you to bring none. <laughs> and we're going to be a good Christian airline. We're not selling no alcohol on our plane. You bring your own alcohol, we just, <laughs> we just sell the setups. Huh? And you know a good business for a brother and sister like you to go don't cost much money is the greeting card business. Now you know you can't compete against Hallmark because they they out there. You know what I'm saying? They've been there for so long, but they they can't capture that ghetto vibration, you know what I mean? I mean you ever bought a Hallmark card and send it to your lady? You ever read it? The crow dark sing to sweetly as the lark when neither are attended. Nigga, do you love me or not? What's this? <laughs> 
just have simple vibrations, you know. I ain't gonna do it no more. <laughs> Give me another chance, baby. You know, she hit on me first. <laughs> Ooh, and you know, You will never understand the universe and the real God till you understand astronomy. All this other crap is just hearsay. I've been looking at the Big Dipper since I was a little boy. It's never changed. The Milky Way always stays the same. That, that you can't tamper with. You can't lie on that. You can't switch it to how you want it. And then change the rules when it's my turn. Yeah, they changed the rules on King. They didn't kill King called the integration. Or his position on human rights killed King because he was the first African-American to ever get in a position in America to determine public policy. That's what he was killed for. We shall overcome someday. That's an easy song to say. Don't say we shall overcome today. Thank you, Dr. King. But he had to die. Hmm? Certain things happen to, to move you to another. I was there. Went to jail. I beat up by the cops. And we kept coming. Kept singing, kept smiling, no hatred. Even black folks were telling us how stupid we were. But we kept coming. I did not know 45 years ago that a black man would head the Mississippi State Troopers. Back then, uh, a white woman on a commercial airline couldn't fly a plane, couldn't be a mechanic, couldn't be an executive. All a white woman could do back then was be a stewardess, and in order to be that, you had to look like something off the center page of Playboy magazine. And then the Civil Rights Movement came through. They was killing us. They killed white folk, black folks, children, blow up churches. And we got civil rights legislation through. Y'all need to read that because it didn't say for Negroes only. Hmm? And because it didn't say for Negroes only, all y'all was covered by it. And if you don't believe it, go out to the airport. Black woman back then couldn't be a stewardess, a black man couldn't be a pilot, and a white woman could only be a stewardess. She looked like something out the center page of Playboy magazine. And then that civil rights legend came, came through. It didn't say for Negroes only. So anytime you get on a plane now and see an old, short, fat, ugly white stewardess, we got her that job. Hmm? <laughs> That's right. Not her white brother, not the Marines. Not her husband. We did it. Before that civil rights movement, a woman couldn't be a cop. And because of us, and a handful of white folks with no guns, 
You got women that head police departments in major cities, head homicide sections, narcotic sections. Huh? Nothing has ever happened like this. And nobody said thanks, but my mother taught me thanks is not necessary, it just shows good manners, which America has never had. Who would have ever thought that thug, president of Harvard University, would lose his job because he would make some strange statement about the right side of the brain pertaining to women. Hmm? And they ease him out and put a woman in his job. Hmm? Hmm? Do you really know who King was? Or do you think just something we got out of it? Thank you, Dr. King. When I go to Washington, D.C. and be standing there, I told my grandson, the one that lives in D.C., I said, I'll take you with me and explain to you how this happened. And so on January the 20th, a few days, I would be explaining to my grandson how it happened. I say, always remember there's two people we have to thank for this before you get to King and before you get to the movement. One of them is named Jim Lee Jackson, Jimmy Lee Jackson. Most folks on the planet have never heard of him. Had it not been for him, we wouldn't witness what we're witnessing now. That's how the universe works. Who we'll reach down and take ordinary people who we say is insignificant. The universe don't have insignificant people. Jimmy Lee Jackson. February 18, 1965. It happened in Marion, Alabama. He's a deacon. And for four years, he'd been trying to register to vote. They wouldn't let him. So they called King's office, and King sent down one of his aides, James Orange, to lead a voter march, just a little march. And they arrested James Orange. And Jim Lee Jackson and all the deacons came together and they got 500 people to go march on the courthouse where they was holding him in Perry County to let James Orange know we got your back. They weren't going to be there but 15 minutes. They're going to sing some songs and read some scripture because they could rescue you back then and you'd never be seen or heard of no more. Well, when they got there, the state troopers, and the sheriff's police, and the city police, they shot the street lights out and attacked the marchers. Jim Lee Jackson was with his mother and his grandfather, which was her father, he was 82 years old, and they was kicking him and beating him with sticks and butts of rifle, 82 years old. And his daughter, which was Jimmy Lee Jackson's mother, went to pull them off, and they started clubbing her. And they ran into this Negro cafe, and they chased him in there knocked Jimmy Lee Jackson's mama down and Jimmy Lee was trying to drag her away and they shot him in the stomach twice. Then carried him to jail and booked him before they carried him to the hospital. February the 18th, 1965. He died February the 26th, 1965. 
And because of that, we decided we was going to organize a march to protest his death. And the march was going to start in Selma, Alabama, not Perry County, not Marion. And we're going to march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama to protest his march. He's killing. And that's what Bloody Sunday was about. It wasn't about the right to vote. It was a protest in the world. Watch what happened on William Pettus Bridge. That wouldn't have happened had Jimmy Lee not been murdered. And John Lewis, who's known all over the world, wouldn't nobody known about him outside of Atlanta. And because of that, in a couple of months, we had a voting rights bill. Hmm? And that's what you're going to look at. Thank you, Jimmy Lee. Hmm? And the second person, before we get to the rest of us, It was Bush. Who would have ever believed that this president would have a daddy that had a daddy named Prescott Bush that was not only a Nazi sympathizer but sent millions of dollars over to them thugs? But who would ever believe he would produce a boy that would produce this boy that would mess the country up so bad? We'll take anybody. So those two. Somewhere. The whole world is happy now. All over the world. All over the world. But well, what's about to happen? When I ran for president in 1968, I'm real glad I didn't win now because we needed a nice Negro. I would have scared all y'all. You black folks, y'all, you black folks been marching on me because, see, my cabinet wouldn't have nobody in it that's educated. <laughs> if you could read or write, you couldn't be in my cabinet. <laughs> well, wait a minute. All these white boys got these PhDs, and look what shape we're in. Let's try something different. <laughs> Condoleezza Rice had more PhDs than the president's whole cabinet. They call her Condi, and that winch don't see nothing wrong with it. They never called Madeleine Albright Maddie or never called Janet Reno Janie. Hmm? They got a soda pop blacker than her. They call Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and when you ordered, you better order by his full title. You go to the store and ask for a pepper, they give you a chili pepper. Hmm? Thank you, Dr. King. On election night, I sit with my wife and we watched it. I, those of y'all have been hearing me, I've been, I've been saying for 18 months he'll win by a landslide. The only thing I missed was uh, I thought he would get 360 electoral votes. They've been calling me from all over the world. The first one was the Financial Times. Mr. Curry, how'd you know? I'll let everybody in on my secrets. And I'll lie to white folks in a minute. But I tell them I'm lying. I, I said, well, I, I knew it would be a black man president because Hollywood done produced four movies where black men was presidents. <laughs> and a TV show called 24 where a black man was president, he was assassinated by his secretary of state, so he better watch Hillary. It'll be funny. Isn't it? You know, they change the rules and you can't even feel it. Obama, why'd you stay in that church so long with that preacher? And he's so he's so precious, he was trying to explain it. I said, glad it ain't me. 
Because I would say, you know, for a hundred years, these priests been ripping off these little boys' booty. And when they got caught, I didn't read or hear where nuns and priests left the church. Matter of fact, they couldn't even get the Pope to say nothing, so why is the rules different with him? Hillary said, how did you stay there that long? <laughs> I sent her a message. <laughs> I said, when your old man embarrassed you and your daughter all over the world with Monica Lewinsky, you didn't leave. can't even be honest. I mean, I had me a little problem with, you know, I got out of it. But I walk about five miles every morning. This day I decided I was going to do 10 miles. Then a friend of mine came in town and said, have you walked? And I said, yeah. He said, oh, man. I said, we do it tomorrow. He said, no. Let's. I said, no, we do it this evening since you're going to leave town. And so I made the mistake. Have you ever been tired and you, 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 know, you didn't go to bed, you just sit on the couch, you know, and you just you kind of went to twilight zone, you half sleep and you have, and I had the TV on. And they said, bulletin, bulletin, civil rights icon admit baby out of wedlock. I ran to the phone, called my wife, I said, baby, don't say nothing to the press, I'm coming home, I can explain it. <laughs> she said, I'm going back to sleep, they're talking about Jesse Jackson. We left you youngsters a mess. America is one sixth of the world's population. And we consume 94% of the world's hard drugs. And you think you are something special, been kissed by God. What fools. I went to high school, my high school was some of the high school bulldogs. Did you have a mascot at your school? What was it? I can't hear you. The Hubs. <laughs> Usually in special school, huh? The Hubs. The Hubs. You ever stole a hubcap, huh? The Hubs. But you know what I'm talking about. You can name school anything you want, except you couldn't be. What was, your, what was the name of your high school? What was the name of your high school? No, North what? North Hagerstown Hubs. Yeah. But you couldn't have named it North. Well, you could have named it the North Hagerstown Blue Devils. But you couldn't name it the North Hagerstown Blue Jesus. And that's just kind of strange. In a Christian society, you can name the school after the devil. And y'all be running around with your helmets and your little sports stuff on with a devil with a pitchfork. And Christians would be at the game on the weekend. Go, you devils. Go, you. Hey, Christian, who you for? The devils. Yeah. You got a major university, the Duke University. Blue Devils from right down the street, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. I've been around demons, been around deacons, but never the same place. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. King. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all come together and, and, and make this country a humane place? It's funny, in America, when you hear the word humane, they were talking about the humane society, talking about animals, huh? Not people. Huh? And so we thank Dr. King, his life, his, his kindness, his, I was with him. He never said one thing when the cameras was on and something else when they were off. somewhere, and because of him and that movement 
in his death, the world is messed up as it is, it's still a better place. Huh? And now you youngsters have to, and I hope Obama going in will stimulate not just black folk, but you women. Huh? Can't believe, see, I realized I had a problem when I realized a white woman didn't get the right to vote till 1921, and you came over on the boat with that boy? I said, boy, if you feel that way about his mama, my mama better stay in the house. Yeah. And then you died. Huh? Went to jail, beat up. White women had the intelligence equivalent to a PhD. They called you a witch and burnt you at the stake. Not black folks, not Indian, white men. A well, nun goes to college, a priest goes to college. The priest can listen to confessions, but the nun can't listen to none, and they tolerate that crap. Huh? And most of y'all don't see nothing wrong with it. Huh? Before this movement, not one women's jail had a woman warden. It was all men and 98% of the guard. Can you imagine what went on? And today is not, not one women's penitentiary in America that don't have a woman warden. Matter of fact, there's women warden of men's jails now. That's what can happen with a movement that's not talking about hatred. That's what King was about, huh? And now we'll look at Obama, try to straighten this mess out. Somebody asked me on the interview the other day, Mr. Gregory, all these home foreclosures, what do you think about that? I said, I, I lost my house when times was good. Yeah, they repossessed my Rolls Royce. I was in it. Y'all yeah. yeah. yeah, can't get no sympathy for me. My brother called me the other day. He said, they about to repossess my car. What must I do? Don't park in front of the house. Yeah. And I just hope Obama can, can relax the fear because we talk about God. But in God, we trust is on the money. And most Americans don't know enough about stress to go through all the changes and, hmm, of what you're fixing to go through. Who would ever thought all them MBAs, y'all call them the smartest and the brightest. Hmm? 200,000 of them been laid off in New York City alone in the last nine months. Huh? And don't let nobody trick you and tell you about this is equal to the last depression. The last depression, nobody had nothing. 1951, 71% of white folks in America didn't own a car. That's what Obama got to fix this thing quick because see, you can't teach me how to ride a bike, then unteach me how to ride. Huh? And if you don't believe it, just watch it. And everybody's happy. I got some cousins call me today. They're coming up from St. Louis to be there. See, so y'all taking the bus? Oh, no, we couldn't afford it. They just went to the, to the junkyard and got them old trucks and put them together. And they got about 37 trucks. I said, where y'all staying? They found a a room in Motel 6 where there's going to be like 200 of them in one room. I told my wife, that sounds like slavery. That's how we was when we come over. They're just they fixing to go back to that same vibration. We've come a long ways. And I hope you women will look at it and say, when will it be your turn? Y'all asked him about it. They said, well, we want Hillary's job to go to a woman. <laughs> if, if black folks say we want Obama's job to go to a black, even black folk will be complaining, oh, the best for the job. I've been hearing that crap for so long. You black folks can't drive a train because you have no education. Well, what do you mean, man? All you got to do is follow the tracks. <laughs> so, 
somewhere. Thank you, Dr. King. And so I say to you tonight as I leave you, it's real simple. You've got to get rid of all your smart and your intelligence. Look at all the great Bibles that's ever been written. Ain't nothing in there about smart and intelligence. It talks about great wisdom. And then this boy came through and tricked and changed it to smart and intelligence. Something he can control. If he can control wisdom, he'd build a pyramid. And what we're going to look at the day after tomorrow is far greater than a pyramid. Hmm? Pyramid was built by mere people. When Obama take the oath, he was built by the same force to put the universe together. The pyramid can't talk, can't walk, can't reproduce. He can. Hmm? Sometimes we get our priorities mixed up. Hmm? So I'll be with my grandson. And she asked me all kinds of questions, and I don't. I try not to answer them like my folks used to answer me. So I say to you, it's not about fear. That's the biggest problem I had when I got married. My wife couldn't handle debt. She was scared. When we're going to pay Sears and Roebuck, well, baby, you act like we got some money. We don't have no money. <laughs> and when I give me some money, Sears and Roebuck, not my first priority. What do you mean? They knew I wasn't going to pay for that stuff when I got it. <laughs> what do you mean on the back of the application? Say, who's going to pay for this? I said, your mama. I walked in the house two weeks later. I thought Lil was having a nervous breakdown. Here, here, here's a letter from Sears and Roebuck. Look here, it's final notice, final notice. I looked at it, final notice. Huh. Thank God we won't be hearing from them no more. <laughs> you just got to stop worrying. You got to ask, if this democracy is so good, this democracy is so good, why are we going all over the world trying to ram it down people's throat with a gun? Anything good, you don't have to force on people. You don't believe that? Ask a prostitute when the last time she put a gun on somebody. <laughs> and just be cool. That's what I learned from the movement. Don't get upset. Mississippi Chef said, nigga, I'll kill you. <laughs> I thought I was already dead. So what'd you say? I said, I thought I was already dead. Well, I thought, I thought you killed me yesterday. Then he said, I was crazy. Then he started getting scared. Cause he, I first got my Rolls Royce, I was, while I was out on the highway, I don't know how they can sell you a car in America that do 140 miles an hour, but there's no road that permitted. That should be illegal. <laughs> hmm? So I'm doing about 140, having a ball. I don't know where this white cop came from. That didn't bother me. I'm in a Rolls Royce. He caught me. That little old raggedy shivy. And I noticed as he approached the car, he had this strange look on his face. So I act like I was a cop. What's happening, champ? You okay? He said, well, I got a problem. See, tonight's my birthday at midnight. And some friends is having a surprise birthday party for me that I know about. And it's quarter to 12. And I've been a state trooper for 38 years. And I really want to be at the party, but if you're doing 140, I just be a, I do a disservice to the people of this state. But I still want to be at the party. Now, this is a little rural area, so in order for me to book you, I've got to take you 40 miles down the road. It'll take about five or six hours. 
So in fairness to my wife, in fairness to the state, like I said, I've been a state trooper for 38 years. If you can just come up with any old kind of reason that I have never heard before, then I'll forget tonight. And I said, we'll see what happened, officer. How long you say you've been a state trooper? 37 years. That was my problem. 37 years ago, my black wife ran off with a white state trooper. And when I looked through the rear view mirror, I thought she was bringing her back. And so I'll leave you tonight. And I'll explain something to you. I explained to that little grandson of mine. He's looking at someone on TV who had died. And he said, where, where do people go after they die? And I said, he lived on the same floor with me, but in a different apartment. I said, it's raining out, run. Tell your mama to give you your raincoat. I'm going to take you and show you something. So I live, my apartment in D.C. is across the street from Rock Creek Park. So I carried him over there. And I said, see them raindrops? I said, all rain comes in little bitty drops, trillions of drops, but we just see the big sheet of it. But, it's, but if I brought you over to the water, because when you bring it here, you see the drops hitting the water. Hmm? You see, just one drop at a time. And I said, all raindrops have one job, is to work their way back home. You say, what do you mean? I said, well. When they hit that water, they got to work their way back. If they hit the land and the dirt, they got to work their back to the river, to the stream, to the ocean. We humans, when we're born, we have one thing to do. God don't give a damn about a PhD like your daddy, God. Or a PhD like your mama got. Or how much money you got in the bank. Or if you're black, you're white. You're rich, you're poor, you can read, you can't read. God has one law. When you come here, the only thing you have to do is work your way back home. Hmm? Hmm? I brought you through that little door called your mama's womb. But all you got to do is work your way. And I have one restriction. You better be as clean when you get back as you was when I put you here. Hmm? You're not born a racist or a bigot or a thief or a murderer. You pick that up on the way. And then I said to my grands, let me explain this to you a little better. I was seven years old and my mama came and got me out of school half day because she wanted to take me to this spiritless woman that said, you got a son that got something on his head and I want to tell you he's going to be great one day. And my mama, she believed in that in school, you know. And so I cut home and and we had to be there at one o'clock, so she washed my face and put my little suit on and, and dressed me up. It was raining like hell. She said, now you sit here on the porch, I'm gonna go get dressed, and don't you get dirty. I'm seven years old. All the big boys is down playing in the rain. So I go to play with them and they mad because I'm all dressed up. They threw me in the mud and I ran up and knocked on the door. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Look what that she opened the door and said, boy, just look at you. I told you not to get, you can't come in this house looking like that. Hey, 
I said, grandson, listen, she didn't say I couldn't come in. She said, I can't come in there looking like that. And I say, so son, just hope that you carry yourself in a way that when you get to that big door, you won't hear coming out that door what my mother said to me, you can't come in here looking like that. It's just that simple. Now y'all play all the games you want, get hung up in all the churches you want, be full of hatred, let somebody reduce you below your dignity and don't know you violating the universal God. Let a bunch of thugs control your food, a bunch of hoodlums control your education, everything. And y'all think y'all are so powerful and clean. They got engineered animals that you put on your table every day and America's the only country don't have to put on the label that they've been cloned and you think you're free. Huh? So you youngsters, you got a big job. And if you understand King and what he stood for, it's an easy job. When you're doing it for other folks as well as yourself. Hmm? What a glorious night tonight. To know King. And to know where this had led to. And with Obama winning the presidency, it's just like if we was all firefighters. And when they go to a fire, they say, first thing, we got to knock it down. Hmm? You ever heard that word? Then we knock it down, then we work to put it out. With him winning, it's like all America came together behind him, and that's knocking down the fire. The fire ain't out. And then they get there and knock that fire out and turn and go back to the station. The whole town can burn down. So that's where we are now. Got a big job, but it's a good job. And take everybody else with you. And while we celebrating and going through all of that, remember our Indian brothers and sisters, huh? who is so easy to forget. We came over here and stole the country and called them savages and called ourselves settlers. We've got a ball team down the street called the Redskins and don't know why that insult Indians. Because the American government said a good engine is a dead engine. And so there was a bounty on Indians. And they was killing so many Indians, the government couldn't handle them. And they said, look, 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 we'll just, just, uh, just cut their heads off, just bring us the head. If you younger folks go and find one of them Indian head nickels, that's what that represented. And they did it with an ax. They got a dime with a picture of an ax on it. And they brought in so many heads, the government said, no, 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 just, just, just bring the hair in. And, and white folk was, 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 was killing white folk, bringing in the hair. And the government said, as of 12 noon tomorrow, the only hair we paying for, it have to have a little red skin on it. And that's what them thug dog pimps, the name, and y'all don't see nothing wrong with it, huh? You will one day. Hmm? You will one day. Huh? And when they sold the Washington team to those white businessmen in New York, they paid $800 million. I was saying, oh, God, let my Indian brothers and sisters oh, let them take that casino money and, 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 and pay 900 million and then change the name to the nigger honkies and see how y'all feel. Huh? Hmm? It's different when it's switched around. Huh? So enjoy the moment. And those of you that pay strict attention to it, 
Because as long as you're on this planet, people that's not born are gonna ask you about Tuesday. Hmm? Gonna ask you about it. The biggest thing that's ever happened in the history of the planet because it's being televised. So I say to you youngsters, as a human being, I'm sorry that I'm part of the group that left you the mess to clean up. But now you have no choice. I love you. God bless you. Peace be with you. <laughs>